Welcome to Mindless Entertainment. I'm Jesse Milestone, and today we are going to continue talking about Star Wars. If the configuration looks a little bit, bit different, you're very perceptive. It is. I had a Passover Seder last night in which 17 people crammed inside my studio apartment, and everything is in a bit of disarray right now. I kind of like this, though. This is a nice, like, angling here. Um, but it's not going to last because I have to put my furniture back eventually. Um, the point is not that though. The point today that I'd like to address is this other thing that I've been hearing. So we have a lot of different ideas um, coming out about about Star Wars. These new things that we haven't heard before. These new points that were not previously part of the Star Wars universe that we're now being told are, are things. Um, and this one trend uh, I've heard described as the democratization of the Force. Um, I don't, I don't think that's the right word for it because it really, it's more like the dilution of the force, uh, the uh, forced sameness, the conformity of the force. Basically, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's this idea that you're getting through things like, oh, well, who's Rey? Rey's nobody. She comes from nowhere, but yet she's one of those force powerful people in the world where previously those people seem to have come from somewhere. Um... And then you have like Broom Kid, and then you have, oh, Holdo was force sensitive too, by the way. And like, let's, you know, get more in touch with the fact that Leia is super force sensitive, even though she's a Skywalker anyway. But this whole idea that like everyone's force sensitive all over the place, and that's just the thing now. And everyone has like equal potential to use the force. Like, Stike, you thought that people were special and chosen? No, those just happen to be people who found good teachers. But we all could sit down and learn how to just be Jedi Knights if we wanted to. And that is one of the stupider, more pointless things and more like it's also it's not a good thing it is definitely a, a very very bad change that they've made um bad change very bad change um because it 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 does it it de it makes it not a special thing anymore and and that's that's to me has become this broader trend in uh in some of the talking points in uh like in social justice minds and things like that i've talked to a bunch of people who don't want to admit that they're better at something than anybody else or that they had some they they ignore uh, they there's no there's no nature anymore it's all nurture there's no nature there's no anyone's born innately better at something else you know is, is somehow can do something and and therefore couldn't like that's 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 absurd. That's totally absurd. I mean, it's taking this idea of equality and making it way, way, way too fucking far. Like you, we're not all equal. We're not all the same. We don't look the same. We don't have the same body types. We don't have the same muscular structures. We don't have the same potential for certain diseases. I mean, like, look, if I have a history of cancer in my family, I am better at getting cancer than other people are. That is a fact and you cannot take that away from me. I'm sorry if you are one of those people. I'm actually not um, I'm, I'm, if that seemed insensitive, fuck you, you're too sensitive. Um, but yeah, like I, I just, it's, these are things, right? These are things like I, some people have different levels of alcohol tolerance. We do not all have the same potential for alcohol tolerance. Um, we do not all have the same potential to eat peanuts without dying. Those are things that are differences, unalienable differences between us that you can't fix and you can't equate. Like I am better at eating peanuts than somebody who can't eat peanuts without dying. That is a fact. Like I am biologically better at eating peanuts than that person. Um, so like to, to try to take that away is, is totally freaking reductive. It's totally reductive you can't say like i mean there are some there are some people i mean like meryl streep who went to uh, college and her teachers were like she was here for this many years and we didn't teach her a thing she just knew it all already like that's not everybody you know people go and they'll take comedy classes to try to learn timing to try to become better comedians but then you see someone walk into a room and every fucking thing they say is funny that's not that's that's a gift that's something you have right iq was created as a, to seek to measure uh those the natural innate intellectual differences between people um, not to say better or worse or smarter or stupider or whatever, but just our brains work differently. Some people are better at doing science because their brains are wired for science. Some people are better at being creative because their brains are wired for being creative. And there's nothing wrong with saying, yes, I am better at this thing than you are. Like, I am just, I have a gift for it and I fucking own that gift. Rather than being like, no, we're all the same. I'm not better than anybody else. I'm not better at this. I don't have different potential to reach than other people. Um, you fucking do own it. Um, that's a, that's a, that's a really, I, I just, it, and then, so going back to, to the Star Warses, um, 
it comes into play there. Oh, one more point though. Like, if you do think that we are, like if you want to see the world, if you want to see what the world looks like where we're all 100% equal and everything is the same and we are all the same, have the same potential, etc., the same capacity to become fucking doctors, lawyers, ballerinas, princesses, whatever, uh, read Harrison Bergeron by Kurt Vonnegut and tell me what you think about that. So do that. Um, if you have read it, you understand that that's, you know, what the, the absurdity of saying we are all 100% biologically, physiologically equal in all of our things and our potentials. Um, back to the, where, how does this tie into Star Wars? So they're doing this to the Force. They're taking the Force and saying this is not that intangible thing. This is not the person, the five-year-old with a beautiful operatic voice. This is not um, the Meryl Streeps of the world. This is not the person who, you know, reads science textbooks for fun at a young age because they just digest that information so quickly. Uh, that the Force is, um, it's like being a secretary. Anyone can do it if they work hard enough. Like anyone. I mean, yeah, I subscribe to that. Like you can be anything that you want to be if you work hard enough. The most talented people do not necessarily, you know, get the best stuff. Um, like get the most things. Uh, like, and there are people who work really hard and get more than that and have less talent. Like that's fine. But the, the force is not the thing that's just like, everyone has this, everyone can do this. Yeah. Like the force is in everybody. Everyone has pieces of the force made up in them. Like that's, that is important. That is relevant. Everyone. I don't think everyone is force sensitive. I think if, I think if everybody in the Star Wars universe, like really worked and tapped into it, like, you know, Buddhist style, you know, meditating and shit, they could get more in touch with the force and it could become a part of their life. But the fact that like, oh, anybody could just be force sensitive. Like, yeah, that's fine. I mean, th the whole thing, oh, it's the Skywalkers. Star Wars is a story following the Skywalkers. Before the Jedi got eradicated, there were dozens of Jedi from all over. And these are not necessarily like people with good pedigrees and the right lineages and the ones who invested in midichlorian stocks a million years ago and bullshit like that. Like, that's not... That's, that's, we don't know where these other Jedi came from. They're all different races and species. They come from all different places. Some of them are probably just born into normal fucking families. Um, but the fact is, is that there's a special group of people that are independently selected from the population based on their force sensitivity. And that is awesome because let's think, who does Star Wars appeal to? Star Wars appeals to a lot of nerds, right? Star Wars appeals doesn't necessarily, I mean, it appeals to a lot of people, almost everybody right now, but really like, the people that it means the most to, like the people who look into into fantasy and take the role models from fantasy and things like that, are not are people who need that. Are people who need something to look up to and something outside of themselves to hold on to because whatever reasons, maybe they're living unfulfilled lives. Maybe they're like I was when I was a kid and a teenager, and I felt totally outcasted and didn't belong anywhere and didn't fit anywhere. And let's face it, people who are popular kids and accepted still feel like nobody understands them because that's what being a teenager fucking means. And part of that, like having this fantasy, these fantasy elements and these things, is having this sense of hope is having this idea that there's something beyond me there's something more than me um something bigger than me some destiny if you want to call it or potential that there is for you to live up to that makes you special that makes you great that makes you worthwhile and that's an important thing because there are people who are looking for a reason to live and those people i mean not like it's maybe a little too dramatic to be like those people live because of star wars um though i am kind of curious to know if anybody killed themselves because of the last jedi like morbidly horribly that would be terrible obviously um but i wonder if like that's a thing if star wars was so important to somebody that when it got ruined and taken away from them they just like were like fuck it there's no reason to live anymore sorry too many likes um but yeah it, it's it's it that the fact that it is special i mean if everyone in the star wars universe if you watch the star wars universe and everyone was a jedi you wouldn't care that much as much about wanting to be a Jedi. I mean, still, yeah, sure, it'd be cool to use the Force, but you'd be like, okay, well, I would go be a Jedi because it's cool to be a Jedi, but you wouldn't, it wouldn't be like, oh, if I could be anything in the Star Wars universe, I would be a Jedi because I could use the Force and all this and all that. Like, I would be the select group of people. It would just be another version of fantasy where you're like, man, that world seems like a pretty cool place to live in. Um, like say Harry Potter, right? That's a whole beautiful thing about Harry Potter. Like, it could be anybody. You don't have to, I mean, Hermione is born of, with muggle parents. Um, but it was so... You, that's why you waited when you were 11 for your fucking Hogwarts letter. Because you wanted to get the hell out of whatever life you were leading and be something more and be something bigger. If every fucking goddamn person got a letter to Hogwarts, it's not as special anymore. It doesn't mean as much. It doesn't have the same gravitas. It doesn't hold the same weight. It's not... It's just... It's just... It loses something. So while we're on the topic of Harry Potter, uh, what house would you be in if you were in a Harry Potter house? And what house do you think I would be in? 
Uh, it's, that should be a really easy question. And who would you be in the Star Wars universe? I always said, because I'm into having the best of both worlds, I was I always said, it was when I was a kid, I wanted to be a Jedi, and then I was like, that's a lot of training, and the big thing for me is the whole having someone to call master. I don't really like calling anyone master anyway. I figured I would have been someone who joined the Jedi Academy, who learned a bunch of shit, and then like defected and became a smuggler. So I was just some just badass rogue chilling in the galaxy who just had a lightsaber and used the Force. That would be me. Um... And married to Han Solo, so also that would be me. Um, but yeah, like that's, I, I just, it bothers me. It, it bothers me so much that, that there's this idea that we have to make it known that this thing is for everybody. It's just like, this, it's the fucking participation award thing, you know? Like, oh, you're all good, you all tried equally hard. Like, that's great, but what you're doing when you do that is you're taking something away. You think you're giving something to everybody. What you're actually doing is taking something away from the people who tried harder and did more work and succeeded at a thing, you know? Like, I don't want, I don't, it doesn't matter. It's an intangible thing in a fantasy universe. It's not real one way or the other. It's not important, you know, it's not important to make sure that all the little boys and girls know that they're all equally good at using the force. Like, no child, unless they're really fucked up, watches Star Wars and goes, man, I wish I was one of those force-sensitive kids because clearly I'm not, and that just sucks for me. No, they're watching it going like, man, if I were in Star Wars, I would be that person. I would be a Jedi. I would be this. Because they put themselves, they insert themselves into that universe and they create the character they want to be. Who would I be in this universe? You get to choose. I choose that I'm going to be this ridiculously powerful, mystical being. That's what I choose. I seek that. I look at that. And then you can do things as you're growing up if you're an introspective person and realize that your role models, your heroes, the characters you look up to in fantasy, what is it? What elements, what qualities is it about those characters that make you so want to be that? And then you seek to cultivate those characters in your own personality and in your own life and become the best possible version of your yourself because of the lessons you have learned from these characters that you understood growing up as a child. Now, if you don't have that, if you're like, what do I learn from the Star Wars universe? Everyone's a Jedi. You don't get to look in the Star Wars universe and be like, what makes a Jedi special? What qualities are it that, that make me want to do that? You're just like, well, Star Wars is about Jedi and I like Jedi. So da, 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 da. you know, you're losing that thing. Like you don't need to sit there and be like the force is for everybody. We fucking know the force is for me because I love Star Wars and I watch Star Wars. That's who the force is fucking for. And I know that whether or not you have a universe where every single person can have the force, right? When we put ourselves, when we mentally put ourselves in our imagination into these stories, we don't put ourselves in as stormtrooper number five who died because a rock hit him in the head too hard. We put ourselves in these stories as the amazing, incredible characters that are given to us, right? We don't need you to fucking tell us like, oh, you can be special too. Like I fucking know I'm taking that for myself. That's part of the journey of being somebody who feels like they're, they're, they are more than what they've been given or they're seeking more than what they already have is understanding that and internalizing it themselves and going out and getting it for themselves not sitting around going I wish I was special and having someone pat them on the head and be like well guess what Susie you are so fuck that um we would just be living in a world where people were just walking around just jizzing force all over the place and the room would be covered with jizz forever uh, in case you haven't noticed, I am on a mission to use the line jizzing force all over the place in as many videos as possible because I just love the image of just jizzing the force everywhere, just like Ray does all over that movie. Anyway, that's um, that's where we at right now. I'm gonna stop for the night. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, tell me tell me what you guys what you guys think about it. Who are you, indie universes? I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm just speaking out of my asshole. It's it's over there. I'm I'm so tired, guys. I'm so tired cooking for a bajillion people and organizing a gigantic uh, fucking dinner for 17 people is a lot of work. And I did that and now I'm gonna go sleep after cleaning my disgusting kitchen. These are what's gonna happen. Um, find me on the other social medias. I, I'm on Instagram. You guys can all see how joyous and excited I am about that. And I'm gonna post things on it, I guess, so. I don't know, follow me on that, maybe. Um, and uh, tell me what you think about things, because I always want to know what you guys think. Oh, also, also, if you hate this video and you hate me and you're like, this sucks, uh, I don't care. I, why are you wasting your time writing to me about that in the comments? I just watch something you like. I mean, it doesn't give me any joy to know that you're 
that you're watching this being like, I'm suffering through your words. Uh, I mean, actually, it does give me a little bit of joy. So that, like, if you do comment, that's just know that's what I'm taking away from your comments, where you're like, you're disgusting, and I hate you, and your opinion's wrong, and I love The Last Jedi. It was the greatest movie ever. My takeaway from that is not like, oh my god, this person has a point. I should just shut down my YouTube channel and stop. No, my takeaway is like, oh my god, you watched my video and just suffered the whole time. You just hated me, and you hated my opinions, and you just kept suffering through it. You're an idiot or a masochist. That's my takeaway. Um... I, I get it. It's the internet. Haters are gonna hate. You all are gonna do that. Some people just can't help themselves. They live to just shit on other people's videos, and I don't know why. It's hilarious to me. Um, I just, I just want you to know, in case you haven't realized this yet, if you don't like my content, you don't have to watch it. There's no legal obligation. There's no requirement. Once you click on it, you don't have to stay with it. That's not a thing you have to do. So if this doesn't make you happy, find something that does and stop being a miserable son of a bitch. That's all.